Hello and welcome to the next frog tip and this time the frog tip will be about something I noticed. I had few guns in my hands lately uh, from the third generation VFC AR-15 HK416 types and I actually noticed two things. One thing is that none of those and they were sold in Europe had the NPAS and lots of them actually had these kind of chokes in the nozzle. You can see this metal part inserted here. And you can see um, I have here a bolt carrier group for M110 and it also has this choke and it has no NPS as you will see later. And what I want to show you today is how to modify this because this choke, uh, this is for one joule limit for Asia. So if you want higher output, especially on HPA, you need to remove it. Uh, for green gas you also can remove it. Second thing, it's good to have NPAS and it's really easy to make one for your gun in case you don't have it. So there will be two parts. In the first part I will show you how to get rid of that choke and in the second part I'll explain you how to add the NPAS to your nozzle. And again, this is the M110 bolt carrier group and the nozzle, but this applies to all the guns in general. Yeah. When I bought my M110s, I bought one from Taiwan and it had both this choke and the lack of NPAS, the like regular valve. And I bought the second one from Europe and it had no choke, but it, it lacked the NPAS anyway. And one thing I didn't mention yet is that, of course, um, the NPAS system and removal of the choke uh, obviously it changes the muzzle energy so make sure uh, that uh, you are allowed to do it because of gun law in your country or um, if you are allowed to do it and uh, you set some kind of energy obviously it has to comply with legal requirements in the country you are yeah so the very first thing you need to do is to actually remove the nozzle from the gun and depending on the gun, you do it a tiny bit differently. So I won't show it in detail. You can probably find it on different videos or manuals in the internet. I'll show you these exact modifications I mentioned. So here I have my nozzle, HK417SR25 type. Asia version uh, has the choke, no NPAS. So in order to remove it, we need to remove the rear part and in these other types of nozzles uh, basically you need to do the same, so split it in half yeah, to open it. So I push out the pin here and we get inside. So what do we have here? You can see the valve spring, valve, there is this support part and the main core of the nozzle um, and we stay with the nozzle itself there are no more parts in the nozzle only the choke that we will remove and now extremely simply we just need to push this out and in general it's pushed from the front so you should probably push it out from the inside but honestly it makes no difference so I'm gonna push it out from the inside I'm gonna use some kind of tool yeah like this put it in and hit it gently a few times with a hammer. You can see that this choke actually is not uh, on the same surface as the tip of the, or this front face of the nozzle. So there is space to push it out. If you put it like this against the table, uh, it's okay. You can start hitting, but just be careful. So I hit it a few times and you see it is out. So this is that choke I mentioned and basically you can put it aside if you have any use for it and the nozzle is now clean. Uh, you can have a look inside because I guess they are like pushing these chokes into the nozzles. They are not molded together so, so sometimes there are a few debris inside after like you know this could be scratching on something. Let's see in my case on white background. Yeah on white background you can see yeah, you can see it's not perfectly round, so there is probably some debris from uh, mounting of that part. So I will just put in some small file and remove it pretty quickly. So you can see right now it's perfectly round, so all this mess that was inside is removed. 
I did it with regular round file. Yeah. The choke is out and the first part is ready. So now we'll focus on the NPAS. So for comparison, I prepared a different nozzle um, with the NPAS to show you what it is and how it works. On the top, this valve has no NPAS and this valve has NPAS. So to understand it, uh, it's good to know how the valve works um, exactly. How it works? You can imagine that the parts here are inside the nozzle and this opening on the valve side is exactly here where um, there is the opening for the gas on the nozzle. So when you shoot, the air or the green gas goes through the nozzle into the valve and travels forward but also fill, fills out the whole empty volume of the nozzle in front and in the back of this valve. It cannot leave um, to, through the front because there is the BB and the BB uh, is like a clogged barrel, let's say, it stays sealed in the chamber. So the pressure rises when the pressure is big enough, um, the BB will start to move away when it travels through the hop-up knob it ends up in the barrel. In the barrel it travels with no big resistance, so basically the pressure starts to drop behind the BB when it goes out. Yeah? So when the pressure on this side is smaller than on this side, um, the gas that is in the rear of the nozzle travels also forwards and pulls the valve together with it. And you can see this wider part, the part with the bigger diameter here, will go forwards and seal this exit to the front through which the gas travels. So this hole is covered basically by the nozzle and this portion uh, is sealed in the nozzle. So the only thing that the gas can do is to travel backwards and when it travels backwards, um, there is the resistance from the spring, the main spring of the bolt carrier group holding these in the rear, in the cylinder. So this cylinder inflates and the blowback happens. So basically bolt carrier group is ejected backwards when the force from the pressure is big enough to overcome the force coming from the recoil spring and this whole thing shoots. Yeah, um, actually I'm thinking about making some detailed video on how GBBR works, but let's say this is for the purpose of this video. So how the NPAS can influence or what the NPAS does. So as you see, all these components are actually the same. Uh, there is a different return spring in this one, but it has no meaning for this purpose of explanation. But you can see that the only difference is in the valve. So this valve has a screw going through it and this one has a plastic part support. The NPAS valve allows you to set up the energy, the muzzle energy of your gun. How does it do? Uh, that particular thing. As I explained, when the BB is traveling forwards, this valve chases the BB because the pressure on this side drops compared to this side of the valve. Yeah? So the pressure is pushing the valve to follow the BB. And depending on the time, how long it takes for the valve to seal, the BB will get so much pressure that will push it out of the barrel. Yeah? So the gas transfers the energy from the moving gas basically to the BB and the sooner we will shut off the gas supply the less pressure will stay in the barrel to transfer energy to the BB and the shorter the time the less energy the BB will have and in turn um, you will reduce the muzzle energy obviously. So what you do with NPAS, you can see the screw here, is you set the position of this valve. So if I have it like here, you see this is, let's say, how it looks like when assembled in the nozzle. The screw is supported on the silver part and the more I screw it in, the more the valve travels forward and this way it has shorter path to travel to seal off the gas exit to propel the BB. The more I undo the screw, the more the valve will move backwards and it will take longer for the valve to shut off the gas going into the barrel and the BB. Yeah, so that's how it works. It's extremely simple rule. So you can see both valves right now from closer look and you see this one has the screw and this one just has a plastic rib that permanently sets some kind of distance. And from the side you can also see on top you have this rib and on the bottom you have a screw. 
Um, this wall is tiny bit thicker on the part with the NPA, without the NPAS, but it makes no difference to the performance of the gun actually. Okay, so with all this technical knowledge now, what to do in order to have NPAS in the gun? Either you can buy the complete nozzle with NPAS or this particular plastic part with the screw inside. That's, let's say, simple but expensive solution. Or you can just take this part and modify it by cutting off this rib, drilling it through and adding this type of the screw as the VFC part has which is much simpler and I'm about to do just that. For making this modification, the only thing you need actually is a screw and VFC uses M3 times 8 screws, uh, the headless type, yeah, these worm screws. So I'm gonna use exactly the same one. You can use a different one if you'd like, but you can get a bit different behavior. Um, it depends on you, yeah? So the screw is here prepared. Right now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this plastic part and just cut off the rib with a regular knife like this one and you can see the rib is removed yeah um, you want this to be as flat as possible yeah the one with the number here and this wall to be as flat as possible so in my case it's nice and now the only thing left is to drill the hole through and basically um, this screw cannot move freely in the valve so um, we won't cut a thread like for the metal, uh, yeah, we are drilling in the plastic and this is, as I said, M3 screw, so it's enough to drill a hole of the diameter 2.5 and then screw the screw in and it will go so tight that it will retain its position when you shoot and so on, so there will be no issue. Tricky part here is that you need to drill and from the rear if you are drilling then this uh, surface is at angle so it will be a little hard. The best is to insert the drill from the front and make sure that it's in center. I'm gonna use first a 2 mm drill and uh, then I will re-drill it to 2.5 mm as it fits for the M3 screw and I'm gonna use this part that I 3D printed. So basically um, I want to show you a simple method in case you don't have it like a table drills or something like this, some, some more sophisticated device. So this is a simple 3D printed part. I put the valve here so it's in axis and I put the drill from the other side through the hole and you can see I'm able to drill uh, in axis of the valve. Yeah, so there's no problem. Uh, I will not make it bad. And this is made for 2 millimeters. Uh, when I have 2.5 millimeter drill, I will go through a 2 millimeter hole already, so it will be very quick. Let's start. Yeah, I'm just drilling. You can see the drill went through nicely. Then I can go to 2.5 millimeters. So I change to a bigger drill and I go again inside and I increase the size of the hole pretty quickly. Oh, and the drill went through. Nice. So what you want to do right now is to remove these uh, flying debris, yeah, clean it up basically. And when you do it, um, you need to take your M3 screw and put it from the front of the valve, so like this, because this is the side that we will be um, setting the valve from, yeah, through the front of the nozzle, and basically screw it in. It will go with some resistance, but this is exactly what we want as we don't want the uh, screw to move when you shoot and change your energy settings, right? And the screw went on the other side, everything is nice. So what we have here is an NPAS valve for the VFC made of the regular one. So it was pretty quick and simple, cheap method how to do it. Uh, what's left is now to just take the nozzle, assemble it. So all the regular parts you had for the nozzle, basically you put this all inside and that's it. In my case, I throw the valve with the spring. The opening in the valve has to face bottom of the nozzle. Then this support part. And then the rest of the nozzle. So it closed nicely. I can close it with the pin here. So if you have the uh, nozzle prepared, now you need to put it back into the bolt carrier group. Just remember to re-loop everything um, so that it works properly. 
depending on the type of gun obviously um, this assembly could be different so here I have mine uh, bolt carrier group ready nozzle works and now to set the NPAS you just need to insert the key um, for this particular screw M3 um, that we just added insert this from the front into the nozzle you have to of course catch the screw inside and when you will be turning the screw with resistance which is good you will be changing the NPAS setting just like the original VFC system uh, is exactly the same so the more you screw the screw in the deeper it go the less power you have the more you unscrew it the more power you will have up to some limit of course um, by the way, um, this nozzle is not modified, it does not have a cutout here, I have a special video on um, this kind of modification to improve your gun performance for the HK417 and AR10, so I will link it. This modification I'm gonna do right now to this particular bolt carrier group. That's it for today, thank you so much for your time. Um, there are some new GBBR systems coming soon on the channel, so subscribe and hit the notification bell. Uh, make sure you won't miss those. Like and comment, let me know what you think about this particular frog tip. No, more frog tips obviously will also come, so stay tuned for now. Thank you so much for your time and attention. See you around and may the power of GBBR be with you.